Eta aircraft with glass cockpit are equipped with two TAILS FMS-220 flight management systems. The FMS manages the weight of the aircraft, its performance and the flight plan. This video shows you how to set up the FMS and prepare for a flight. And you may not be aware of it, but the procedure to set up the FMS has changed. So stay tuned. The glass cockpit has five LCD screens or display units, numbered 1 to 5. They are two primary flight displays, PFD, two multifunction displays, MFD, and one engine warning display, EWD. FMS number 1 is embedded in display unit number 2, and FMS number 2 is embedded in display unit number 4. The interface between the FMS and the pilot is through the multi-control display unit, MCDU. During normal operation, MCDU number 1 is used to control FMS number 1, and MCDU number 2 is used to control FMS number 2. The FMSs are connected with a crosstalk function, which ensures that data inserted in one FMS is automatically transferred to the other FMS. In addition to provide interface with the FMS, the MCDU is also connected to the RMS, Radio Management System, ACARS, Aircraft Communication Addressing and Reporting System, ACMS, Aircraft Condition Monitoring System, and the CMS, Central Maintenance System. In this video, we will focus on the FMS. The MCDU has a menu key alphanumeric keys, a clear key, scrolling keys, RMS key, FMS page keys, brightness control keys, and an execute key. On both sides of the screen, there are line select keys. The lowest part of the screen is called the scratch pad and displays entries made with the alphanumeric keys. What I will show in this video are mainly screenshots recorded on a flight from Lagos to Port Harcourt in Nigeria in October 2021. But some clips are from another flights and therefore some data might vary. And disclaimer, the aircraft has standard 2.2 software. Aircraft with different software and updates might have different menus and functions. Okay, so let's go. At power-up is the MCDU menu page shown. The menu can also be accessed by pressing the menu key. The captain selects FMS1 and the first officer selects FMS2. Next, the FMS power-up page is shown. Here you check four parameters. The aircraft type, in this case ATR72, that the standard navigation database, STD, has not expired and that you have two green OK. Select init. This is the FMS init page. It can also be accessed from the data page. It shows current date, validity of the standard navigation database, and the time. Default time is UTC, but the operator can select local time by inserting the difference here. First, you select post init. Here it's possible to insert a position manually, and this is what most of us are used to do. But beginning with standard 2.1, this is no longer necessary. This is the FCOM. The FMS automatically computes the most accurate position based on all sensors. If you insert a position manually, you override this function. Therefore, you do nothing. Select return. Next, select Navdata. Check that the standard navigation database has not expired. If that is the case, you should see the new navigation database on the line below. All you have to do is to press the left line select key to activate the new navigation data. Select return. Next, select units. Check that the units are correct. 
Normally, it should never be necessary to change the settings. OK, this was the initial setup of the FMS. This is only needed to be done before the first flight of the day. What you see from now on is what you will do before every flight. You start with the weight page. As I said earlier, this is a flight from Lagos to Port Harcourt in Nigeria. And here are all the data we need. First, we insert the block fuel into the line for fuel on board, in this case 2,800 kilos. This gives an endurance of about 4 hours. Then we insert the zero fuel weight. This is just an estimate, as we haven't received the load sheet yet. The dry operating weight of the aircraft is about 14,000 kilos. And I will add 100 kilos per passenger. In this case, the booking number shows about 30 passengers. That's 3,000 kilos, so the zero fuel weight will be 17,000. The actual weight is inserted when we have received the load sheet. Finally, we insert the reserve fuel, which is fuel to alternate plus final reserve. In this case, the alternate is Lagos and the reserve is 1100 kilos. Select return. Next, we go to the performance init page. Here we enter the cruise level, in this case flight level 170. This can be done in two ways. You can either write the cruise level and insert it in place here, or you can adjust the altitude select on the PFD, which is what I'm doing here. Then we enter the alternate airport, in this case Lagos, and the cruise level. Select return. Finally, we select the flight plan init page. Select route, enter the flight number. You must use the company's three-letter ICAO code because it's presented to the air traffic controller via transponder mode Sierra. Then we enter the ICAO code for the departure and destination airports. Now you can see a green light over the execute key. You press the execute key and activate this plan. Press on the line select key next to your departure airport. This is the departure page. Select the runway from the list. In this case, we use 18 left. The SIDs for that runway are now shown. There might be more than one page. In that case, you use the scroll keys. In this case, we will follow Botbo 1 Sierra departure as it will bring us to airway Romeo 984. Select transition waypoint if available. In this case, there are no transition waypoints. Press the execute key. We are now back at the flight plan page. All waypoints in SID are listed. We use the scroll keys to move to the next page. This SID ends at Botbo waypoint. Press the left line select key next to Botbo and you will enter the lateral revision page for that waypoint. And here, there are several choices. On the left hand side, we can select whether to cross overhead the waypoint or not. We can also insert a holding pattern. On the right hand side, we can enter the next waypoint we will fly to, a new destination, if you have to make a diversion en route, or an airway. In this case, we will follow airway Romeo 984. We can either insert the name of the airway right here, or we can press the line select key and select the airway from the list. And then we can either insert the name of the endpoint, or we can press this line select key and select from the list. In this case, it's Papa Oscar Tango. When required, we can add a new airway in the VIA box. Press the execute key. Normally, we will enter approach when we get closer to the destination. But in this case, the forecast of weather at the destination is in favor of runway 21, and we can insert approach right away. 
First, we click on the left line select key next to the destination. This opens the arrival page. We select ILS Runway 21 and the star will be Arago 1 Romeo. There are no VIA waypoints and no transit waypoints. When we edit the flight plan, the changes are made in a temporary flight plan, while the active flight plan is unchanged until we press the execute key. The active flight plan is green and the temporary flight plan is yellow. If we now press the execute key, all changes made in the temporary flight plan are moved to the active flight plan. If we select the temporary key, we move to the temporary flight plan. Here we can cross-check that all entries are correct. As you can see here, there is a discontinuity in the flight plan. It is removed by pressing the clear key and then the left line select key next to the discontinuity message. The blue text is the missed approach procedure. When we are satisfied that the temporary flight plan is correct, we press the execute key. Now we see the active flight plan, which is green. If we discover that we have made an error, we can press the undo key and the flight plan reverts to the previous setting. The undo label is visible for one minute. The flight plan page has two viewing modes. The default mode is ETE and estimated fuel on board for each waypoint. The second mode shows ETA, speed constraints and altitude constraints. In this case, we are supposed to cross Mike Mike 810 at 1000 feet or above. The A behind the number means at or above. If there is a B behind the number, it means at or below. And if there is no letter behind the number, the aircraft is supposed to cross the waypoint at exactly that altitude. If the aircraft for performance reasons cannot comply with an altitude constraint, the altitude is shown in red. At Mike Mike 811, there's a speed constraint. 202 means maximum 200 knots. For a reason unknown to me, in Aircraft Standard 2 software, the FMS shows 2 knots extra. In Aircraft Standard 3, the FMS shows the exact value. Next, we go to the progress page 103. The upper half is a copy of the flight plan page, and the lower half shows top of climb, destination, ETA, distance to go, and estimated fuel on board on arrival. We compare the numbers with the operational flight plan. We select PRAIM, which stands for Predictive Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. This is a calculation of the availability and accuracy of the GPS signals along the route. Before you start, insert your takeoff time. We can choose between four different modes. RNAV 10 Oceanic, RNAV 5 RNP4 Oceanic and RNP1. In this case, we use RNAV 5 then select Start Prediction and press the Execute key. There is one important thing here. This test will only work if you have set up the weight page and the performance init page beforehand. Therefore, if the FMS refuses to do this prediction, you check those pages. The test takes some time and in the meanwhile, you can do other things, for example, make a secondary flight plan. When the test is completed, the OK message is shown, and you can press Return. In addition to the flight plan, the FMS can store a secondary flight plan. When you repeatedly press the flight plan key, you toggle between the active and the secondary flight plan. The secondary flight plan is shown in white. Before departure, it will be natural to insert the route and approach we will fly if we have to return to the departure airport or the takeoff alternate. What we see here is the secondary flight plan from the previous flight. Select new flight plan. And this is the secondary init page. 
Here we have two options, insert a new route, like you did with the active flight plan, or you can copy the active flight plan and modify it. Once the secondary flight plan is in place and you want to activate it, you have two options. One, select activate. The secondary flight plan is moved to the active flight plan, the previous flight plan is deleted, and the secondary flight plan is emptied. I never use this function, instead I use the second option, swap. The secondary flight plan then swaps position with the active flight plan. The benefit is that it's easier to change back to the original flight plan when needed. I select a waypoint not too far away, in this case I will use Botbo. And this is the lateral revision page for Botbo. I insert the departure airport as a new destination. Then I insert approach I assume will be used if I have to return back to the airport. And that's it. When we receive the load sheet, we press the performance key, select performance in it, and then wait. From the load sheet, we insert a zero fuel weight. We do not insert a gross weight, because that can result in a wrong fuel quantity. Finally, we insert the takeoff center of gravity, which is given in percent MIC. And this determines the takeoff pitch trim. You press the performance key and you're back to the takeoff page, where you will see the takeoff speeds for a non limiting runway in normal atmospheric conditions. The performance page on the MFD will show more parameters like engine torque at takeoff and minimum speeds with zero flap. If there are icing conditions at takeoff, you select it on the MFD and the MCDU will show icing speeds. If you are on a limiting runway, you must insert manual takeoff speeds as determined by performance software. You can learn more about takeoff performance in this video. If you have entered manual speeds and want to revert back to automatic speeds, you press the clear key and then the associated line select key for V1 VR and V2. And that's it. Your FMS is set and ready for takeoff. The FMS have more functions, for example you can insert wind at different altitudes for each leg, but as long as you fly short sectors in light winds, it's not really necessary. It's also possible to store a list of flight plans on the FMS, making it more easy to set up. In the next video, I will show the most common functions we use during flight and approach. Until then, Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!